Hello fish fools, Jeff here. So this is my 10 gallon tank with Guppy and Unlearn's Live Bear hybrids. And as you can see, I have let the Java Moss grow wild. It's been a while since I've let it grow this much. Um, and the reason for that is I've been battling hair algae in this tank for about a year, for over a year. Until recently, maybe a month or so ago, pretty much all the hair algae is finally gone. Because it's been, the hair algae's just been growing all throughout and just tangled in with the java moss. So whenever I would do water changes, I'd be pulling out java moss, you know, with the Java moss with the hair algae, but I haven't been pulling out any Java moss the last few water changes because there's no hair, hair algae in it. So yeah, it's been over years I've been struggling with hair algae in this tank, and I have tried multiple things to try to get rid of it. But finally, I, you know, finally this tank is in balance um, to the point where no hair algae is growing. Um, you know, I hear that, you know, one of the reasons that tanks grow air, grow algae is because they're out of balance. Like, what causes that imbalance? You know, it could be multiple factors, but how to figure out exactly what that is, you know, I don't really know. I'll tell you, you know, what differences lately have been made. Um, but along the way, I've tried several things. Like the first thing that I tried was Aquarium Co-op Easy Carbon. That's basically like Aquarium Co-op version of Seachem Excel which is an, supposed to be an algae inhibitor. Um, when I first started getting hair algae in this tank, you know, mostly all tangled in the, the java moss, and I used to have a lot of guppy grass in this tank. And when I started using that Aquarium Co-op Easy Carbon, it seemed to kill off all my guppy grass and didn't do anything to hinder the um, hair algae. At least that's, you know, if that's exactly why, I don't know, but I mean, that's based on what I was trying, that's pretty much how it turned out. So I stopped using the Easy Carbon because it seemed to have a negative effect on the plants and not, didn't really do much for the hair algae. And then along the way, I did try to keep lights off for a while. I want to stretch, I think four days or so where I went without any light. That might not have been long enough to make a difference because I just went back to the regular routine after that. Um, but one difference that could be, have been the reason why I was out of balance, I'm, I don't use timers on my lights. And not in, in any of my tanks. So pretty much, you know, I turn the lights when I'm home and my, you know, my schedule can vary. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't keep my lights on a, on a timer because, you know, I don't want the uh, lights to be on when I'm not home and off when I am home. So I just, you know, pretty much turn them on and off when I am home. So, I mean, there's a lot of inconsistency there, which we could keep a, an aquarium out of balance and could be a contributor to algae, but I meant something just for my, around my, you know, keeping lights on around my lifestyle. I'd rather do that than keep my lights on a timer and just um, put up with any issues that might cause, but you know, I don't think that is that major. But then, um, last summer, it was around August last year, I got a mono shrimp. 
I mean, a mono shrimp are supposed to be algae eating machines or that's what they're hyped up to be. And after I got them, I bought 10 from Flip Aquatics and I might have received maybe 11 or 12. And they are still in here. It's must be tucked away inside underneath all this plant growth, all this java moss growth, but they are still in here. Whether there's still 10, 11, or 12, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've never seen any dead bodies of them, but I do see their molts and I do see them you know, come out. But when I, they come out for feeding, when I feed this tank, they're, they come out. But after I got those, they were pretty disappointing. Uh, you know, it was August last year when I got them in. They didn't really seem to do much to get the hair algae under control. I used to have some, um, maybe like green spot algae that was growing on me, some of the Anubis leaves, and they did clean that up, but they didn't do much for the hair algae. You know, they might have, they might have little by little, but not enough to really make a noticeable difference. And I still had to regularly pull out the Java moss that had hair algae tangled in it. Um, but then I did hear that somewhere along the way, like in watching a live stream, I think Aquarium Co-op mentioned it, that um, algae, like blue light, this blue light sp spectrum doesn't do anything for regular plants, but it will um, contribute to algae growth. So that's one change I did make, because this, the light I have on this tank, it's a beams work light. It has mostly white LED lights. You can kind of see the difference up here. I mean, without showing it directly, like too much of a glare, but it's you know white, blue, white, blue. My, see if you can tell the difference there. And you can see in the tank, it's like the the blue lights, you can kind of see like a blue beam here, here, and here. There's three blue lights among all the white ones. And what I was doing, like at night, like before I turn off, I was turning off the light entirely, I would leave the, just the blue light on for a little while, like this. So it was just the blue lights, you know, maybe for an hour or so before I turn the light off entirely. And without realizing, like, I think that contributed to algae growth. Because, you know, as I mentioned, supposedly this doesn't do anything for plants, but it does contribute to algae growth. So I stopped doing that. And at the, right around the same time, I stopped feeding this tank as much. Because I used to feed it more and I did notice that the Amano shrimp in here would eat the fish food. So I think the Amano shrimp weren't as hungry to eat algae, even though I don't really know how much algae they were eating. But it might be like a combination of all those things. Because even without, with or without Amano shrimp, if you feed a tank too much, supposedly that can contribute to algae growth. So I think having more food in the tank contributing to algae growth and at the same time having more food more food fish food for the amount of shrimp to eat made them less hungry so that they wouldn't eat hair algae and even fish you know if fish are hungry they'll eat algae so combination of those things not keeping that blue light on not feeding this tank as much and just I don't know all those those factors have gotten this tank into balance so that the hair algae doesn't grow anymore. And that's, you know, like I said, it's been over a year I've been struggling with that hair algae and finally, you know, it seems to be resolved. 
and that is fantastic. So this is, you know, with all of that hair algae growing on it, this is a good example to see this is good and healthy java moss. You can see like letting it grow, it just grows like these strands just keep growing out of it and you can see like the little tips of the pieces it's kind of like a, a little brighter green nubs like little buds that new plant growth just keeps growing out from it so without hair algae issues it's nice to see all this nice and healthy java moss although now i need to it's just growing too much i need to pull some of it out because it's interfering with well, the other plants so right down here, this is the last little bit of Rotala that I have. A while back I put some in here and that's you know the last bit of Rotala green. I have some, this is Jungle Bell. This some over here, here. It's not growing that much and not growing up tall, maybe. Letting the Java Moss grow so much is affecting it. And even the bacopa stems, you know, this one like broke off there. I had a taller piece over here. There's a little bit hanging out there. And we have Java fern windelev over here. So there was a like a log, like a Malaysian driftwood log right here. That's one thing about Java moss; it clings. To everything so it's all attached itself you can't even see that there's a, a Malaysian driftwood log there and here there's a big piece of Malaysian driftwood coming up right here all java moss clinging all over it on it I have this, this Anubius you can see some down here and a little bit poking up up here in the back corner here there is some crypt lutea it's darker on this side because I have all this rickia fluotans floating on top, blocking the light. I need to pull some of that out too. And then in this back corner, there's that's an Amazon sword. That's pretty much like maintaining. It's it doesn't really grow much, but it doesn't. It just kind of basically been staying the same. But yeah, so I'm pretty psyched that the hair algae problems are finally over after you know dealing with it for over a year. Let's look at some of these guppy and Enler hybrids. So pretty much all of these that are left in here now are descendants of a male Endler and a female guppy. Like the male Endler I got from PetSmart, so it was probably not even, I mean, that was probably already like a, I would guess was a guppy and Endler hybrid. Like it wasn't like a regular um, pure Endler, probably like an N class or an F class, class or whatever class it is that is considered like a pure Endler. But, so all these are Guppy and Endler hybrids, and they look really cool, just the coloring on them. I mean, look at this, the colors on this dude. These guys. And some of these are more like yellow cobra Endlers. But yeah. All right. Well, that's it for now. And remember, I'm Jeff, and I enjoy fishies. Thanks for watching.